Hello everyone, Thanks. my name here. Uh, I'm kind of out of practice, I've had to restart this a few times. It's been a while and we're finally able to talk about Moho 12, which is very exciting. Um, there are loads and loads of new features and I'll probably do several videos, but I'll start with this one, covering some pin bone action. Um, and what pin bones are, are basically the same as normal bones, but if you just click instead of drag, you get a zero length bone. And these bones have weights to them, the same as any other bone. And they're parented in the same way. Although by default, they will parent to the last full length bone. So if you put down an arm and then put some bones for, for um, rigging, then they'll be part of that arm. And then you can do another uh, full length bone, it will be parented to the last pin bone. So what that allows us to do, I don't know if you can hear furious salad chopping in the background. Um, but anyway, uh, so what I'm going to do is try and rig this arm here. Um, there's a few little extra features which we'll probably briefly talk about as we go along here. But um, So what I've got is I've got the upper arm here, which has just got points, three points at the bottom and the top, and two for the elbow. Um, I've got a hand, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bone here for the shoulder. I'm going to drag one all the way down to the wrist and put another one for the wrist. Then I'm going to um, draw one for the arm, but I'm also going to put another bone here, which is, well, in fact, I'm going to put it here. Um, so this will be for the arm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the full length bones zero weighted so that only the pin bones are having effect on this mesh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flexi bind the mesh of the upper arm to some of these bones. These three, in fact. Um, Press return to, no, no, I don't. Control F, Control Shift and F is flexi bind. Uh, where is it? Use selected bones for flexi binding. That's what I'm doing. And then I select the other two and the other layer do the same thing. See, they've gone bold to show that that's happened. Um, now, one thing I want to do is I want to just change the parenting on this arm. So the shoulder, at the moment, the, because I the order that I drew it, I put the shoulder down first, then the full length bone, and then the wrist. But what I'm essentially doing here is what I want, I want the, this shoulder um, to be affected by the rotation of the, the long bone rather than the other way around. Um, so essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating a bone that instead of having influence along its entire weight, it's got a pin bone at either end which is controlled by the big bone. You can see how the top bone is rotating, uh, the bottom bone isn't obviously because it's parented to this bone that I'm rotating. But um, if I hadn't have done that parenting thing, let me just show you what would happen. Um, so if I parent it the way it was parented before, as I rotate this, the top bone is not rotating because it's a bone in its own right. It's not actually being affected by the rotation of this bone. Um, so I'll just fix that again. And have something like this. So now if I go off frame zero, um, what we'll see is that this is affecting the top arm as intended. This is affecting the bottom arm uh, and that is because of the weight of this bone, not because it's actually weighted in any way itself. So what we can do with this is um, the following. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it swing and I'm going to add a bit of foreshortening because the way these bones um, scale, now I'm holding down control to scale the pin bone. This is one of the well, a, a very cool thing about pin bones, they scale in both directions, unlike normal bones, which only scale in a single direction, otherwise we'd have the arm going widthways. Um, 
So what that allows us to do is have bits of the of the um, rig um, get bigger and smaller in relation. And obviously, because of these these ones affecting the shoulder and these ones affecting the bottom, um, they have independent control over the scale. So this is really cool for creating foreshortening effects, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, Another thing you can do is if I've got Alt held down, is if I rotate the bone, it's the same as rotating a full length bone, but um, in a similar way, it's twisting on its pivot rather than ha twisting on its length. You know, so um, that's pretty cool, and it also means that I'll show this in another video, but you can use this rotation to control smart bones as you could a normal bone. So in another example, which I'll show another time, I created a pin bone to control mouth opening and closing in both directions. And then I had the twist of the pin bone um, changing the uh, wagging of the tongue, which was, so I had a single bone to control the mouth, which is really cool. Um, so anyway, let's get on with this. Now I'm six minutes in already and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing it back, scale this. I'll scale this bone as well and scale that. Now, what you see here is that it's moved out of the way. So I can actually move this bone in the same way that I can move anything. So the far back position is there. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the starting position. No, I'm not. Am I? No, I'm not. I'll go on to here. Now, uh, as you're probably aware, the way that Anime Studio works with the keyframing is that only the bones that you move are keyframed. And if you don't move a particular channel like a scale or whatever on a particular bone, you won't have a, you won't have a keyframe here, which means that if I move this here, it would it would move from zero up to that one. So one of the new features which makes this kind of easier for, I guess, beginners or just if you're if you're kind of don't want to think about freezing your pose every time. So normally what we'd do is press Control F and that would freeze the pose and show all of the um, keyframes here. But what I'm doing is I'm going to swing the arm forward. Um, and then I'm going to scale some of these again. I pressed Alt instead of Control. So let's press Control here. So this is a forward swing. Okay, so now it kind of looks like it's swinging forward. And then here, I'll copy these keyframes back to the to the back. Okay, so now we've got this, which is having some foreshortening. Now let's add a bit of animation to this. So as the arm is going forward, I'm going to bend it like that. So now it's swinging forward. And as it's swinging back, I'm going to do the opposite. And let's see how that works. So now if we watch that, it's not bad. Could probably tidy it up a bit, and I've I've over exaggerated stuff for you. But um, as you can see here, if I move this back, I can scale this even more. I just need to copy these frames over to the front, and then let's see. Now this is a bit too much here. You can also twist it from the shoulder. Let's see. Okay. So another quick little bonus, because uh, I'm nine and a half minutes in, I'll, I'll try and be quick. Um, I'm going to change the shape of the hand as it's twisting backwards. Um, I'll just change it here like this. And what I'll probably want to do is copy the start and end frame so that it goes back to normal. Now the only reason I did this 
was to show you another new feature of Anime Studio 12, which is you can, if you have multiple um, channels or let's say layers here um, highlighted, you can see all of the um, keyframes for both layers. Keep saying channels, um, and we can edit them. We can actually edit them together. So if I wanted to change these here, I can move them around. Um, so if I want to sync this with this, it makes it a lot easier. So there you go. Um, so yeah, that's how I did that swinging arm. Um, I'll be back sometime soon with some more new features. Um, if you want to let me know what, which new features you want to cover, um, I'll be happy to show you them now that I'm allowed to. All right, take care. See you soon.